Hello students and welcome. The title of today's topic will be Prodrugs. The main objectives of today's deliberation will be to understand the concept of prodrugs, to get familiarized with a brief history of prodrugs, to explain the rationale for the introduction of prodrugs, to introduce the types of prodrugs. First of all, let's understand what do we mean by prodrugs. Prodrugs are masked form of active drugs that are designed to be activated after enzymatic or chemical reaction once they have been administered into the body. Prodrugs are considered to be inactive or at least significantly less active than the released drugs. Therefore, salts of active agents and drugs whose metabolites contribute to the overall pharmacological response are not included in this definition. The rationale behind the use of prodrugs is generally to optimize the so-called drug-like properties that is absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion shortly termed as ADME properties. For example, if a designed drug molecule is unable to reach to its target due to its impermeability to cross the membranes, the drug is said to be failed. However, its permeability to cross the membranes can be enabled by attaching to it a promoity which although will render the drug molecule inactive or less active but will enable it to cross the membranes and reach to its target. The inactive drug form with its attached promoity is called as prodrug. About 5 to 7 percent of drugs approved worldwide can be classified as prodrugs. And the implementation of a prodrug approach in the early states of drug discovery is a growing trend. Now, let's have a quick look at the historical background of prodrugs. It was Adrian Albert first who introduced the term prodrug in 1958. A few decades later, he apologized for having invented such an inaccurate term because prodrug would have been more descriptive term. However, by that time, the original version was used too widely to be changed. Nonetheless, the prodrug concept has been invented long before Albert's publication. The first intentionally designed prodrug is most probably methamine or also called as hexamine, which was introduced in 1899 by Schwering. Methamine releases six equivalents of antibacterial formaldehyde along with four equivalents of ammonium ions in acidic urine and serves as a good example of a site selective prodrug. At the same time, Felix Hoffman at Bayer introduced aspirin. Chemically, aspirin is a style salicylic acid which is less irritating form of the anti-inflammatory agent sodium salicylate. However, it remains a matter of debate whether aspirin is a true prodrug or not. Although it was intended to work as a prodrug, aspirin inhibits irreversibly cyclooxygenase, the enzyme responsible for the formation of key biological mediators such as prostaglandins and thromboxanes by stylating one hydroxyl group of serine residue in the active site of the enzyme. The parent drug salicylic acid is a weak reversible inhibitor of cyclooxygenase. In this respect, aspirin cannot be considered as a prodrug. However, aspirin is rapidly hydrolyzed in the intestinal wall and liver as well as in the blood to salicylic acid, which means that it acts in fact like a prodrug. Many decades elapsed until it was again at Bayer, Gerhard Domag in 1932 introduced next prodrug, the antibiotic Prontosil. However, Prontosil was not intentionally developed as a prodrug because only later in the same year it was found to release an active agent aminophenylsulfonyamide upon the action of reductive enzymes. 
The launch of Prontosil gave rise to second generation of sulfonamide prodrugs because sulfonamide moiety was easily linked to other molecules. In a similar way, Roche discovered the prodrug activity of the anti tuberculosis drug isoniazide more than 40 years after its introduction in 1952. Today, it's known that the bioactivation of isoniazide is catalyzed by the myobacterial catalase peroxidase. Since the 1960s, there has been an explosive increase in the use of prodrugs in drug discovery and development. The beginning of 21st century, when property-based drug design became an essential part of drug discovery and development process, has been a time of real breakthroughs in prodrugs. In fact, approximately 20% of the all small molecular drugs approved during the period of 2000 to 2008 were prodrugs. Now, let's understand what is the rationale behind the development of prodrugs. The prodrug approach is a very versatile strategy to increase the utility of pharmacologically active compounds because one can optimize any of the AD amide properties as well as prolong the commercial life cycle of potential drug candidates. So, let's find the potential of the prodrug approach to improve unfavorable AD amide properties or to prolong the life cycle of drugs. First of all, let's understand how prodrugs improve drug formulation and administration. Dissolution of the drug molecule from the dosage form may be a rate limiting step to absorption. In fact, achieving optimal solubility is one of the greatest challenges in the drug discovery process. It has been reported that more than 30% of the drug discovery compounds have poor aqueous solubility. Prodrugs are an alternative way to increase the aqueous solubility of the parent drug molecule by improving dissolution rate by an attached ionizable or polar neutral group such as phosphates, amino acids, or sugar moieties. Prodrugs can be used not only to enhance oral bioavailability but also to modify the bioavailability of an intravenous dosage form. For example, phosphanatoin sodium salt, the phosphate ester is attached to an acidic amine of the antileptic agent phenytoin by an oxymethylene spacer. Phosphanatoin is used to reduce drug precipitation and consequent local irritation by phenytoin at the injection site. It has an aqueous solubility more than 7000 times greater than that of phenytoin and is rapidly converted to phenytoin in blood. The enzymatic hydrolysis initially releases an unstable intermediate which is spontaneously converted to phenytoin. After this, let's now understand how prodrugs enhance drug permeability and absorption. The transport of drug to its site of action usually requires passage through several lipid membranes. Therefore, membrane permeability has a considerable influence on drug efficacy. In oral drug delivery in particular, which is the preferred route for majority of drugs, the most common absorption routes are unfacilitated and largely non-specific passive transport mechanisms. The lipophilicity of poorly permeable drugs can be increased by modifying the hydrocarbon moieties. However, good activity sometimes requires a structure which is far from ideal one for good membrane permeability. In such situations, the prodrug strategy can be an extremely valuable option. For example, oseltamivir is an orally active ethyl ester prodrug of a selective inhibitor of viral neuron aminidase glycoprotein and use it in the treatment of influenza types A and B. After absorption, oseltamivir undergoes rapid bioconversion to its parent drug mostly by the action of carboxyl esterase. 
the bioavailability of the more lipophilic oseltamivir is almost 80% whereas the corresponding value for the parent drug alone is 5%. Improvements of lipophilicity have been the most widely studied and therefore now is also the most successful field of prodrug research. Now let's understand how prodrugs help to change the drug distribution profile. After administration, a drug molecule has to bypass several pharmaceutical and pharmacokinetic barriers before it can reach its physiological target and exert the desired effect. For decades, attempts have been made to harness different macromolecular strategies and nanotechnologies to achieve site selective drug delivery. The lack of clinical success of these methods, however, has focused interests on other approaches. Today, one of the most promising site selective drug delivery strategy is the pro drug approach, which exploits target cell or tissue specific endogenous enzymes and transporters. A great many prodrugs have increased efficacy and safety profiles because of their targeting properties. One of these is the anti-Parkinson agent L-DOPA. Because of its hydrophilic nature, the neurotransmitter dopamine is not able to cross the blood-brain barrier and distribute into the brain tissue. However, the alpha amino acid prodrug of dopamine, that's L-DOPA, enables the uptake and accumulation of dopamine into the brain via the L-type amino acid transporter 1. After L-type amino acid transporter 1 mediated uptake, L-DOPA is bioactivated by aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase to hydrophilic dopamine which is concentrated in dopaminergic nerves. Prodrugs are also designed to protect a drug from rapid metabolism and excretion. Presystemic metabolism in the gastrointestinal tract and liver may greatly reduce the total amount of active drug reaching the systemic circulation and ultimately its target. Rapid metabolic breakdown of the drug can also be protected by a prodrug structure. This is usually carried out by masking the metabolically labile but pharmacologically essential functional groups of the drug. In the case of bronchodilator terbutaline, sustained drug action has been achieved by converting its phenolic groups which are susceptible to rapid and extensive presystemic metabolism into bis-dimethyl carbamates. This prodrug is now called as bambuterol. Bambuterol is slowly bioactivated to terbutaline predominantly by non-specific butyryl choline esterase mainly outside the lungs. As a result of this lower release and prolonged action, one dose daily administration of bambuterol provides relief of asthma with a lower incidence of adverse effects than terbutaline which needs to be taken three times a day. Prodrugs also help in overcoming toxicity problems. Adverse drug reactions can change the structure or function of cells, tissues and organs and can be detrimental to the organism. A successful site selective like prodrug must be precisely transported to the site of action where it should be selectively and quantitatively transformed into the active drug which is retained in the target tissue to produce its therapeutic effect. The ubiquitous distribution of most of the endogenous enzymes that are responsible for bioactivating prodrugs diminishes the opportunities for selective drug delivery and targeting. Prodrugs are therefore designed to reduce toxicity of the drugs at other sites in the body. For example, cytochrome P450 enzymes can be exploited for liver targeted drug delivery. However, when targeting the P450 enzymes, special attention needs to be paid during the drug development process to potential species and patient-related variations, genetic polymorphisms, as well as the potential of drug-drug interactions. Prodrugs are also employed to improve patient acceptability. 
One of the reason for poor patient complaints, particularly in case of children, is bitterness, acidity, or causticity of the drugs. Two approaches can be utilized to overcome the bad taste of drugs. The first is reduction of drug solubility in saliva and the other is to lower the affinity of drug towards taste receptor. For example, chloramphenicol has a bitter taste so it's not well accepted by the children. However, its palmitate ester is less soluble in saliva so it masks the bitter taste and is well accepted by the children. Lastly, prodrugs are also used to increase the prolonged duration of action. Nor does palm, a state drug, loses activity quickly due to metabolism and excretion. A prodrug, dyes palm, improves the retention characteristics due to the presence of N-methyl groups. The main steps involved in prodrug design are identification of a drug delivery problem, identification of desired physicochemical properties, selection of transport moiety, which will give prodrug desired transport properties be readily cleaved in the desired biological compartment. Now, let's briefly know what are the preclinical and clinical considerations of prodrug by conversion. Prodrug strategies have arguably been successful for a number of clinically used therapeutic agents. However, Prodrug research encounters various challenges and additional work in preclinical and clinical settings, much of which can be attributed to understanding the biconvergent mechanisms of prodrugs. Many enzymes involved in prodrug activation are subject to inter individual variabilities in their activities. The main factors contributing to this variability are intrinsic, especially polymorphisms in the genes encoding the enzymes, but can also be extrinsic, that is, interactions caused by other drugs and xenobiotics. Both intrinsic and extrinsic factors may cause insufficient or excessive conversion of the prodrugs into their active forms. Moreover, interspecies differences in the enzyme activation represent another hurdle to the prediction of human disposition of certain prodrugs. So, we will focus on esterases and P450 enzymes, which are particularly and widely exploited enzymes in prodrug research. First, coming to esterase catalyzed hydrolysis of prodrugs. The most common approaches for prodrug design are aimed at prodrugs undergoing metabolic biconversion to the active parent drug by functionally prominent and diversity tolerant hydrolysis such as peptidases, phosphatases, and in particular carboxyl esterases. Because they are ubiquitously distributed, the potential for carboxyl esterases to become saturated or potential for their substrates to become involved in drug-drug interactions is generally considered to be negligible, although not impossible. Prodrug by activation by cytochrome P450 enzymes. The P450 enzymes are superfamily enzymes accounting for up to 75% of all enzymatic metabolism of drugs, including several prodrugs. There is accumulating evidence that genetic polymorphisms of prodrug activating P450s contribute substantially to the variability in prodrug activation and thus to the efficacy and safety of the drugs using the bioactivation pathway. Now, coming to the types of prodrugs. Based on the site of conversion into biologically active form, prodrugs are classified as type 1 prodrugs, type 2 prodrugs, type 1a oblique 1b prodrugs. Type 1 prodrugs. These are the prodrugs where conversion of the prodrug into the parent drug and attached moiety at the time of action occurs intercellularly. 
The examples are antiviral nucleoside analogs, lipid lowering statins. Type second prodrugs, these are the prodrugs where conversion of the prodrug into the parent drug and attached moiety at the time of action occurs extracellularly. For example, in digestive fluids, systemic circulation or other extracellular fluids. An example of this kind of prodrug is etopside phosphate. Type 1A oblique 1B prodrugs. These are mixed type of prodrugs that is their conversion into active form may take place both intercellularly as well extracellularly in gastrointestinal fluids and systemic circulations. So to conclude with the prodrug concept has been used to improve undesirable properties of drugs since the late 19th century. Although it was only at the end of 1950s that the actual term prodrug was introduced for the first time. Prodrugs are inactive by reversible derivatives of active drug molecules that must undergo an enzymatic and or chemical transformation in vivo to release the active parent drug which can then elicit its desired pharmacological effect in the body. In most cases, prodrugs are simple chemical derivatives that are only one or two chemical or enzymatic steps away from the active parent drug. However, some prodrugs lack an obvious carrier or promoity but instead result from a molecular modification of the prodrug itself which generates a new active compound. Numerous prodrugs designed to overcome formulation, delivery and toxicity barriers to drug utilization have reached the market. Although the development of a prodrug can be very challenging, the prodrug approach represents a feasible way to improve the erratic properties of investigational drugs or drugs already in the market. This is all about the topic. Thanks. Have a nice time.